Hello friends, welcome to next tutorial in CATIA G5 tutorial series. So friends, in this tutorial, we will focus on the first tutorial of part design. Friends, for part design, we shall have tutorials operation wise because if we tend to cover all the operation in one video lecture, it will be not sufficient to cover all the features in one video tutorial. So for that reason, we shall have these part design tutorials into multiple parts. So here we shall discuss basically on the features and in features in this particular tutorial. We will focus on the pad and pocket operations. We will also see the boolean operations in which the part design is done in the automotive industries across the world. And also we shall discuss what are the limitations of the pocket command and why the pocket command is not widely used in the industry. So friends, please stay tuned with this tutorials. Before we begin with this tutorial, I request you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you have not yet subscribed, click the bell icon for the latest notification of the videos on this YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and like our Facebook page. Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. The links are in the description below. So friends, let's begin with the tutorial. So here, this is the icon for the CATIA V5. So when we double click this icon on the desktop, we enter the CATIA software. So now we shall move on to the CATIA software. So friends, this is the CATIA software which opens up when you click on the icon. So here we go to the start, mechanical design and part design. So here we give the name of the part and if we don't give also later on we can change this. Say OK and we enter into the part module over here. So in this part module, you can see this is the compass we call which is X, Y and Z and you can rotate this compass the wherever you want. And also you can move this compass and place it wherever you want on the part, especially when we are doing draft analysis that we shall see in subsequent tutorials. And suppose you have changed this compass to some orientation which you are not intended to have. So you can just click on this isometric view, you will be back to the square one. On the left, what you see is the history tree. So here on top you will have the part name. Then these are the three planes which are over here x, y, y, z and z, x and you have the part body. Friends, the industries follow a standard in which no modeling or part modeling is done on these default planes. So they are hidden and all the construction will be done on an user inter, uh, inserted or induced references. What does this mean is that a user can have a reference with the parameters he prefers to. That is, tomorrow, if there is any modification coming on the part, especially in the automobile sector, there are lots and lots of modifications done to the stylings till the final product is out. Especially when you are working on the interiors, that is, gold rings and instrumental panels. So these are bound to happen, and every now and then, we need to change the references from one point to another point. So it will be very difficult if the default planes are used because these cannot be changed. So for that reason, what is done is an user induced references are created. So we will hide these planes. One is I can select these planes by clicking with the control key pressed and hide it or else I can just draw a box, select them, right click and say hide the planes. The default planes are now hidden. So the reason for hiding this plane is that we are constrained over here to delete the planes because the software doesn't allow to delete the default planes. So now we need to insert first the reference point and then we shall use the access system from which on which the part can be modeled. Now to insert the references like the point, line and plane as we have discussed in the first lecture of CATIA, that is, these should be inserted in a geometrical set. 
so we shall first insert a geometrical set that is go to insert and then click on the geometrical set you can name this geometrical set as the construction and say ok so you have the geometrical set for construction in which we will be first placing our point so I click on this point command and here I'll place the point at 0, 0, 0. So this means what? Now my point is placed at the default origin. Friends, for simple parts it is okay to place at the origin, but in the industries when there are complicated parts, the point is placed such that from that point the part will be created. And that point is placed by changing the coordinates of x, y and z axis. So in this case we shall keep that as the origin 0, 0, 0 and say ok. Now you see the point has been inserted in the geometrical set. Next is we can insert the planes over here but the planes will only give the reference and not the direction. So in the part modeling the direction is very very important. So for that we can have the axis system inserted here to do that go to insert that is click on this insert and click on the axis system. So once you click on the axis system it will ask you to click the origin that is the point where you need to place this axis system. So I need to place this axis system on the point so I select this point and say ok my axis system is placed. Now these axis system will not only have the x, y, y, z and z explained for reference also x, y and z axis as the direction. Now we shall take a small sketch and do the first operation that is in this tutorial we shall discuss the operation of pad and the pocket operation. And also we shall have the boolean operations done. So to have boolean operation done we need to insert a separate body and not do our modeling in this default part body. So I go to insert and click on insert body. So here a body is now inserted in this tree over here, history tree. And if you see there is an underline on the body that means what this body is now defined. That is whatever operations is done will be done in this particular inserted body. So now to have any operation, feature operations, so if you see here we have pad, pocket, groove, uh, shell, thing, rotate, groove, hole, these are all the feature operations. Then we have here the fillet, chamfer, draft, shell, these are all dressing operations. So here we will see what are these feature operations in multiple videos. So in this video tutorial we will focus mainly on pad and pocket feature operations because covering all these feature operations in a single video will make this video long and we have already seen in the sketching operation where the video has become 40 plus minutes and it will be very difficult to grasp also what has been taught over here. So from these videos onwards I thought of keeping the videos short and cover each and every command in separate videos. So friends now to do this pad operation we need to have a reference sketch. Say for example, now I take the xy plane and create a sketch over here. Friends, in the sketching operation we have seen basically what is the difference between a normal sketch and the positional sketch. So this is the sketch and positional sketch. So to know this difference, we can refer to the video which will appear on the top right corner as the YouTube iCard and you can have the understanding of the sketching uh, workbench in CATIA which we have seen in the previous tutorial. So now here I click the position sketch and now here according to the direction of the axis the vertical and horizontal axis has been selected but with the position sketch we have an option to reverse these directions and say ok and we enter into the sketching operation or the sketching workbench and also as we have seen Sketching workbench is not a separate workbench like how we have the part modeling and surface modeling. It is an integrated workbench within the main workbenches. So here I first create the sketch as the rectangle. The reason is I need to create a rectangular slab as my part model. 
So here I'll click on this rectangle command and create the rectangle. So in the in that lecture on sketching, we have already seen how to create the rectangle. So you can refer to the video which is there in that YouTube I card. So for this, we will first constraint it to dimensional constraint. We shall see now the dimensional constraints. So click on the constraint, uh, click on the element whose dimension has to be given. So this is the breadth. I click on the breadth, go to the dimensional constraint and give here and say I want to change this to 100 mm. I type here 100 and say enter. This should be say I want 200 mm. I click on that, go to the dimension, click over here and give here 200. Now this is 200. So if you see now this sketch is locked with the dimensions but is free to move in the 2D plane. That is dimensionally it is constrained but positionally it is not constrained. So we need to fix its position either. So first we'll fix the position with respect to the horizontal motion. For that I'll click, click on both the vertical edges and the vertical axis and here I go to the geometrical constraint and say symmetry. Say OK. Now here the sketch is locked in the horizontal but it can move in the vertical. So I click on these horizontal edges and then the horizontal axis go to the constraint and say symmetry and say OK. So our sketch is constrained. Friends, sometimes what happens is, though the sketch appears totally green, it will remain unconstrained. So to cross verify whether your sketch is constrained or not, you can click on the sketch solving status over here. And if you see it is ISO, ISO constrained, that means it is completely constrained over here. Say close and exit this workbench. Now in the part modeling, you see the sketch. Then we have a body and a slab say of 30 mm has to be created I'll write here 30 preview and say ok now what has happened by default this operation has taken the vertical axis and a 30 mm from the xy plane vertically upwards is created suppose I want this 30 mm to be done below this xy plane so what I'll do is I'll just double click on that feature I enter into that feature command so I just say reverse direction and say ok, a pad 30 mm below this xy plane is created. Suppose I want to have xy plane in the center, then what I need to do is, I will click on this mirrored extent and the length I will change here to 15 so that 15 mm above and 15 mm below the xy plane, a 30 mm slab will be created. Now to this 30 mm slab, I, I need to create a circular hole which is say 15 mm below. So in this case, I'll have to create that as a separate body and then do the boolean operations. So here I'll click on again insert and say insert body and say OK. And here the body is now inserted. Now in this body, as soon as I insert, it will be automatically defined in this workbench. Again I go to the positional sketch and I select the XY plane and change H and V and say OK. Now again I enter into the sketching operation. I go to the circle, click on the center and I need to give its diameter. Say this should be 50 mm diameter. So I take this as 50. Since I had already taken the center of this horizontal and vertical axis that is the origin, this circle was by default geometrically constrained and just by giving the dimension, it got diametrically constrained. So to check it, again I go to sketch solving status, it is ISO constrained, say close, exit this workbench and now to this, I will create a pad operation, say 15 mm and OK. Now if you see here, a separate body is created but the hole is not formed. So for that reason, we perform the boolean operation. So the first step is, whatever this pad we had created, that is the body 2, we need to assemble it with the part body. So for that, we right click on the body 2, go to body 2 object, the last option. And here we have the various boolean operations that is assemble, add, remove, intra, intersect, then union trim and remove them. So here we first have this assemble and add. 
So if you see here, both this assemble and add are doing a similar operation, but what add does is it will just add that body to another body without considering what are the features over there. Whereas the assemble command will also consider into account the features. Suppose you want an edge or a surface to be created, it will create that edge or a surface if it is required. That is, software automatically analyzes it and creates it. So we prefer this assemble as the Boolean operation here. So we click on assemble. And now this body 2 should be assembled to the part body. Click on this part body and say OK. And now if you see here in the part body, there is a boolean operation assemble and in assemble we have this body 2. Now this body 3 is the 15mm pad and as I said I need a small hole over there. I just right click on this body 3, go to this last object command and say remove. And what has happened is the remove operation is done. Friends, here if you see in both the bodies we have performed the pad operation. So what does this pad operation mean is that it is material addition operation. Though the final output is material removal here, this is the material addition operation and if you see on the body there is a plus symbol. Why this is necessary is because especially when you are involved into plastic modeling, these uh, models which we do are then sent to the tool maker who manufactures the tool for the creation of the mold to manufacture the final plastic model. So when you are creating the mold, there should be positive operations done and if any negative operation is done, the mold will not recognize that operation and that particular feature will not be incorporated in the final mold design. That I will just show here with this example. So now instead of this pad, I will perform the negative operation that is the pocket and we shall see what happens. So I will just delete this pad. When I delete, it asks me whether I need to delete the aggregated elements. So that aggregated element is the sketch and I don't want that aggregated element to be deleted. I just uncheck it and say OK. Now I'll right click on this body 3 and define it in this work object. Now with this as the sketch, I'll perform this negative operation of pocket. And here I'll just reverse the direction and say OK of 15 mm. Now if I define this, I have the same final output obtained over here. But if you know, closely notice this icon on the bodies. So in the body 2, I have performed pad operation. So there is a plus sign appearing over here. So this plus sign indicates a, po a positive operation that is a material addition operation is done. And suppose if this file is sent to the tool maker, he will only create a mold without this hole. The reason is for this particular hole over here, there is a negative operation seen in the icon. So this body 3 is represented with a minus sign. So the tool maker's software will not recognize this negative operation and hence the mold will be created only for this particular slab and not for the circular hole which has been created. So to avoid that, I'll just undo this. So to avoid this, the pad operation is done. Though the final output is same, but this particular hole is done with a positive operation and the toolmaker software will recognize it that there has to be a hole created there and that hole will be created. Friends, in the uh, future tutorials, we will be making use of the same file or the same particular body which we have created for the further operations and especially that is when we are making use of the dressing operations over here, we will be using the same file. So I will be saving this file. So to save this file, we, go, we can go to file, save as, then it will open the directory to choose the directory where you need to save and say I want to save it in some G drive and this I will write it as slab with hole and 
If you see the extension for the part modeling, it will be cat part. So this is very very important because this is one of the most asked MCQ questions when you are in the interview. What is the extension for the CATIA part file? So it is capital C A T part dot cat part is the extension for the part modeling. So whether it is a part modeling or the generative shape design software surface modeling, both will have the extension as cat part. And for the assembly, it will be cat product. So that we shall see when we take up the assembly design. So here this is the cat part and say save and this file will be now saved with the name slab with hole dot cat part. So this is the cat part file or the part model file and in this particular tutorial we have seen the boolean operation that is assemble and remove and what are the positive operations and how the pocket is a negative operation and hence it is not used in the industry that is the reason why it is not used in the industry we have seen in this tutorial. So friends I hope you have understood the uh, pad and pocket feature and the boolean operations in this CATIA V5 part modeling. So if you have uh, genuinely liked this explanation please like and share this video with your friends. Please support us by subscribing our YouTube channel and following us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. The links are in the description below. That's all friends for today in this tutorial. So meet you in the next tutorial. Till then take care. Have a good time. Thank you very much.